In this video, we're going to take a look at sketching modulus functions. When you're sketching modulus functions, there's two cases here that you need to be able to sketch for. The first case is when you take the modulus of the full function. So for example, let's say we've got y equals the modulus of the function f of x, like so. And then the second case here is when we take the modulus of just the argument of the function. So for example, let's say we've got y equals f here of the modulus of x, like so, okay? So for the first case here, when we take the modulus of the full function, what we do here is we reflect anything below the x-axis above. Let's just make a note of that here. We reflect anything below the x-axis here. We reflect anything below the x-axis above. So now, let's take a look at an example here. Let's say we've got the function here, f of x equals x, okay? So if we were to sketch this function here, we would be sketching y equals x. So y equals x is just simply a straight line that goes through the origin here, and it would have a gradient of 1, okay? So let me just sketch the positive values of x here. So look, say like that. It's supposed to be a straight line with gradient 1, but you get the idea. And then obviously this would be also sketched for our negative values of x here. So this would go through here like so. And I'm going to do that part here in a different color. Let's do it in orange. But like we said, it would carry on through here like so, okay? So what we've got here is a sketch of y equals f of x, okay? Now, if we want to sketch the modulus of this function here, what we do, is, like we said here, is we reflect anything below the x-axis above. So this part here in orange, we're now going to reflect that here in the x-axis, okay? So what we're going to get here is we're going to get this simply this v-shape here, okay? So if I try and draw it, it won't be perfect, like I'm doing it freehand on a tablet. Looks say something like this. Okay, and there we have it. So what we've got there then is y equals modulus of f of x. Okay, so that's the first case that like, you need to be able to sketch for. So now let's take a look here at the second case. So what we've got here now is the modulus of just the argument of the function. And what we do here is we reflect everything to the right of the y-axis in the y-axis. So all we do here is we sketch our function for positive values of x, and then we reflect that then in the y-axis. So sketch positive values of our function. So positive values of function. And then we reflect in the y-axis. Okay. So again, let's take a look at an example here. Let's say we're looking at now um, a trig function here. Let's say we've got f of x equals sine x between minus 360 degrees and 360 degrees. Okay. So my sketch won't be perfect here. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sketch the positive values of this function here. So what I'm sketching for now is between 0 and 360 degrees. So a sign here, remember it starts at the origin, it starts at 0. It goes up like so. I'm going to curve back down. Keep going down to minus 1. Then it will curve back up. Okay, so not perfect, but also let me just get rid of that part here, which I think will get rid of the full function. Oh no, so let's just do that again. So I've said this would now curve back up and it would touch 360 there. Okay, I want to be quite precise here. That's 360 degrees and this here will be 180 degrees. Okay, we would have a maximum at 1 here and a minimum at minus 1. Okay, my sketch here, like I said, is just a sketch. It's not perfect, but just so we can put the key points on here for f of x equals sine x. So now, to sketch here for y equals f of the modulus of the argument here of x, 
then what we do is we reflect this part here in the y-axis now, okay? It's going to curve back up here, like so. Gonna curve back down, go back down, and then come back up here. And again, let me just get rid of that part here, because obviously we're only going to minus 360. We'll just switch the x-axis here, minus 360. Like I said, I want to be quite precise. That would be minus 360 degrees there. And this would be minus 180 degrees. Okay. And there we have it. So what we've got there is, um, let's try and write it again. We'll do it underneath. This is y equals f of the modulus here of x. Okay. Like we said, we sketch the positive values of x here for our function. And we reflect that in the y-axis. Okay. And there we have it. So like you can see, there is a difference between when we sketch the modulus of the full function and the modulus of just the argument. So when you sketch the modulus of the full function, it will never go below the x-axis here. And when you sketch the modulus of just the argument here, like you can see, we just simply reflect the positive values of our function here in the y-axis. Okay. And that can go below the x-axis. That's everything we need there for our introduction to sketching modulus functions. So what we're going to do now is just take a look at a couple of practice questions for sketching modulus functions. So we start off here by taking a look at question one. What we've been given is the function f of x, which we can see here is a factorized quadratic. So for part eight, we're asked to sketch y equals f of x. So we do a over here. And hopefully for a, this is nice and straightforward. Nothing more really than GCSE maths here. So it will intersect with the x-axis here at two points. One of those points would be when x equal to 1. From this solution here, and then we've got this solution here of x equals minus 3. Okay. We'll have minus 3 at, say, here. And we'll have 1 at, say, here. And then in terms of the y-intercepts here, that would be minus 1 times 3, which would give us minus 3. Let's say that's there. If we sketch this quadratic here, it will look, say, something like this. So it just kind of what it will roughly look like here. And join it up. We'll get something that looks like that. Okay, so that is y equals f of x there. Okay, so that's part A done. So we take a look at b here now on this set of axes here. So for b now, looking to sketch y equals the modulus of the function f of x. So let's make a note of that here. So now because we're taking the modulus here of the full function f of x, remember we reflect anything below the x-axis here above. So this region here that goes underneath the x-axis here will now reflect above. So my y-intercept now, rather than being minus 3 here, it will now become positive 3. Okay, so these solutions here won't change, so it'll be minus 3. Let's say it's there again. We'll have 1 again. Like we said, now the y intercept here would be positive 3. Okay, so again, it will come down from the top left here, like so. So now, rather than going underneath the x axis here, when I reflect above, like so, like that. And then again, it will go back up here, okay? So, okay, so it's not a perfect sketch, but we get the idea. Like we said, this point here now is positive 3, okay? That's the sketch of y equals the modulus of f of x. And then finally, for c here, let's take a look at y equals f of the modulus of the argument of x here, okay? But remember, what we do here is we sketch the positive values of x. So in that case, now, all we want here is everything to the right of the y-axis here. That would be this part here, okay? So we'll go from minus 3 here. It will cut through at 1, like so. We want that part there. But remember here, anything now to the right of the y-axis here, okay? So the positive values of x here, when I reflect those in the y-axis here, okay? So now we just reflect this here in the y-axis. So we're going to get something that will look like this here. It's just going to look a bit like a quadratic. This time now it will cut through at minus 1 rather than minus 3. So that's minus 1 there. 
it looks like something like that. Look a little bit more kind of curved there. Get the idea. Okay. And there we have it. So that is the sketch there of y equals f of the modulus here, the argument of x. Okay. And there we have it. So that's the solution to A. That's the solution to B. And that's the solution to C there. And to finish with here, then, if we just take a look at one more question, we've got two parts. So let's begin with part A. So it says, on the same set of axes, sketch the graphs of y equals the modulus of 2x minus 1 and y equals x. So we begin here by sketching y equals the modulus of 2x minus 1. Then to sketch this here, what I'd recommend is that you sketch y equals 2x minus 1. And because you're taking the modulus here, the full function, anything below the x-axis here will reflect above. So to sketch this equation here, we need two things. We need the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So for the x-intercept here, that's when y equals 0. In that case then, 2x minus 1 will be equal to 0. If we solve for x here, we're going to get x equals a half. Okay. So that's the x-intercept, which would be roughly, say, there. And then for the y-intercept here, that's when x equals 0. Okay, so when x equals 0 here, we get that y equals minus 1. Okay, so in that case then, it would be, say, here, minus 1. So now we can sketch this here. So... What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to sketch anything above the x-axis to begin with. So, like so. Okay. And then obviously anything below the x-axis here is going to get reflected above. Okay, but what I'll do here is I'll just do it in a different pen color just so you can see what this will actually look like. So, this isn't perfect. Look something like that. Okay, so if I just drop my minus 1 down a little bit here, let's say that's minus 1 there. Okay. But like we said, this part here in orange, we're not actually sketching that, but I just want to show what it would actually look like if we were to sketch y equals 2x minus 1. And like we said then, reflect anything below the x-axis here above. So if I go back to my original pen color, just sketch this on. So now, for the wine set here of the modulus, this would now become positive 1. Okay. So what this is going to look like then, Something like this. Okay. So what we've got here is y equals modulus of 2x minus 1. So what I'll do here, just so I don't cause any confusion, is just let's get rid of the orange part. Okay, like so. So now what I want to do here, and I'll do it in a different pen color, is sketch um, y equals x. So y equals x, we'll do that in blue. And this should hopefully be nice and straightforward. This will just be a straight line that goes through the origin here as gradient 1. It will look, say, something like this. Okay. Perfect. But like you can see, it's just going to be a straight line. Let me try and do that part here again. So it looks a little bit neater. Never particularly easy on a tablet. So we'll go back to my pen here. Okay. Now we said in blue here, this is y equals x. Okay, there we have it. So that's the solution to A. That's the sketch of y equals the modulus of 2x minus 1 and y equals x. And then for B here, it says, hence or otherwise, identify the number of solutions to x equals the modulus of 2x minus 1. So in that case then, x equals the modulus. So let's just write this down here. So x equals the modulus 2x minus 1. In this case here, we're going to actually have two solutions because we've got two points of intersection. If I highlight this in red here, we've got this point of intersection here. We've got this point of intersection here. Okay, it's not perfect, um, but we've got two points of intersection there. Okay. So in that case then, because we've got two points of intersection here, for y equals x and y equals the modulus of 2x minus 1, because they're both y equals, if you equate these here, like you can see, it's just going to be the points of intersection. So in that case, then, we have two solutions. Therefore, two points of intersection. Let's just write this down. Two points of intersection implies two solutions. Okay, well, that tells us that we have 
two solutions there. Okay. And there we have it. So that's our solution to question two. And that brings the end of this video on sketching modulus functions. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at combining transformations.